my channel. Today I'm going to be starting yet another reading vlog for you guys and this one is very exciting because yesterday was my last day of class for the semester and finals week is next week but I don't really have like much to do so basically I'm on summer break now and I'm so excited to be starting this reading vlog. I have so 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 many books <laughs> that I want to read in this vlog. I went through a few weeks ago and I cataloged my entire physical TBR and one of my main goals for the summer is to cut that down because it's like 90 books and it's just like that's not what I want. <laughs> like I want the majority of the books that I own to be books that I've read and I've loved so I'm going to try and cut back on my book buying and I'm gonna try and read my physical TBR. So that's kind of um what we're doing this week because I have like a lot of books <laughs> that I want to read off my physical TBR. So I'm going to start off with the book that I'm currently in the middle of and then we'll talk about the rest of my reading plans. So currently I am reading An Unexpected Peril by Deanna Rayborn. This is the sixth book in the Veronica Spiegel series. <laughs> and I'm a little upset <laughs> because I'm not, I'm not like hating it, but I'm really not enjoying it as much as I enjoyed the other ones in the series. Like it's fun. I have a couple of things tabbed because I really liked them, but I just don't know if I particularly care about the mystery which is kind of like how the others have been going but the slow burn between like our two main characters isn't really slow burn anymore and I'm a little bored. <laughs> I knew this would happen like I knew this would happen so um we're just kind of gonna we're just gonna see okay like I'm still excited to read them but I'm just a little bit less like into it um but it's fine it's not a bad book I'm just like not as obsessed with the series as I have been, but I am quite a ways through this book and I definitely think I might finish this up today. I'm on page 225, which is chapter 20. And there's like 330 something pages in this book. So like a little bit over hundred pages, definitely aim to finish this book today just because I kind of want to be done with it, which like sounds like I'm not enjoying it, but like I am, I just don't know. I don't know. So um, we're just gonna finish this one and we'll, like, we'll see how it goes. So one of my main plans for this reading vlog is to read the Wherever's and Words book club pick for May, which is The Kiss of Deception by Mary E. Pearson. This is also a book that was on my physical TBR, so that's very fortuitous. Um, I'm very excited about this. I think I started reading this a few months ago and I was reading it on ebook and I wasn't into reading it on ebook, so I stopped. But I am excited to finish this up physically. I think I have explained this quite a few times, but I'm going to explain it again because I love the synopsis for this book. And you're following our main character who is a runaway princess who had like this arranged marriage set up for her, but she wasn't into that concept. So she ran away with one of her friends or maybe her servant. She ran away with somebody. And there are two people going after her. One is the guy that she was supposed to marry. The other one is an assassin that was sent after her, I think by her dad, which is kind of juicy, but I could be wrong, but like, I think it was sent by her father because he's the king and like, he's pissed that she defied him, whatever. But in this book, if she happens to meet one of them along the way, it's written in a way where you're not gonna know which one it is. And that sounds really tense, really, you know, high stakes. I'm excited about it. I've heard a lot of good things about this trilogy. And I know a lot of people really love the Dance of Thieves duology, which is a spin-off duology from this. I'm so excited to read that one. And I'm also really excited to read this one. So definitely hope to finish this this week. And then another book that was on my physical TBR and my 2023 TBR is Wicked Fox by Kat Cho. This is another book that I started reading before and then I didn't continue it because I was reading it on ebook. Wow, um, a theme apparently has, has emerged, but I tried to read this last summer and I was really enjoying it. But I was reading on an ebook and I literally just like forgot that I was reading it. So I was like, okay, fine, I'm gonna buy the physical copy instead. And I just really wanna read this. You're following our main character who's a Gumiho, who is a nine-tailed fox. I believe it's based off of like Korean mythology, which I'm really excited to jump into and also get another book off my physical TBR. I'm also just really excited about this one in general because I know a lot of people really like this series. I think the second one is more of like a, um, like a companion book. But I'm excited to read both of them nonetheless. This next book I have is kind of just a project that I'm gonna work on over the next few weeks because I want to finally start A Tale of Two Cities by Charles Dickens. Also look at this really nice cover. It's one of the uh, Penguin English Library whatevers. I love these editions so much. So I'm, I'm excited to read another one. It's also like really floppy. I mean like, look at this. Like, yeah, <laughs> you know that flop? That's what you want to hear. But I read Great Expectations a few months ago and I haven't read a classic since. And I was like, you know what? I have a lot of free time right now. So what if I just read a little uh, Tale of Two Cities 
and I'm excited about it. I believe this is set with the backdrop of like the, the French Revolution. You're following an exiled French aristocrat and a dissolute English lawyer, hence the like two cities aspect to it. But I'm excited about this because I do really enjoy Charles Dickens's writing. Um, also, this is also the book that the, the Infernal Devices is based off of by Cassandra Clare, which is not, you know, like the only reason I read classics, but sometimes it is. And I'm just excited to see, you know, some parallels between this and TID. And I'm excited to read it in general. And then finally, because I cannot go a single video without breaking up this series right now, I am going to be reading some more of Yon of the Dawn, obviously. Last night, actually, I read volume 33. I'm literally already on volume 33. In my defense, um, I started reading the manga technically at, like volume nine because I watched the anime first and then I like picked up in the manga where the anime left off. So it's not like a full 33 volumes, but it's probably like 25 volumes and it's, it's been a lot, but I've been loving it so much. Aside from the current arc that we're in, there's just a lot of decisions being made that I'm like, why? Like, why would you do that? But it's fine. Like I get it, but I don't have to be happy about it, but it's like, everything's fine. Still got the good slow burn going on, so I'm invested. And um, like I said, I just read volume 33 last night, but I kind of ordered five more volumes of it. Because while I'm on a book buying ban, I'm not on a manga buying ban. So I have like five volumes of it coming in the mail tomorrow, and I'm so excited about it. So yeah, I'll probably be like caught up with the manga by the end of this week, which is a sad prospect because like, what am I gonna do when I don't have volumes of Yon of the Dawn to read. I don't know, I'm gonna cross that bridge when I get there. But yeah, I do plan to read probably like six volumes of this um, this week because you know, why not? So yes, those are the reading plans for this week. Aside from that, I don't really have any other plans. I'm gonna spend a lot of this week packing because I do move out next Sunday. But aside from that, like I don't have any schoolwork, so it's just gonna be me and my books. And I'm so excited to start off the summer with a bang. But as for today, it's currently Friday. I'm gonna spend a lot of today like hanging out with my friends because obviously um, I'm not gonna see them when I move back home, which is a sad prospect. But we have a lot of plans today. We're gonna go out tonight. It's gonna be fun. So I don't know if I'm gonna have a ton of time to read, but I think I am gonna have enough time to finish An Unexpected Peril. So let's do it. Let's finish this. I'm scared, but excited to see what I think of it. An unexpected peril and I think I'm gonna give it a three stars which is honestly like disappointing but also not every installment in the series can be a banger like it has to have its its ups and downs you know and like honestly I'm not that mad about it I don't really care because I still really enjoy like the characters I really like the dynamics but I don't know I just wasn't that interested in this book, I did really enjoy the ending of this book because at the end of like all of these books, our main characters always get put into like this life-threatening situation. And I do enjoy reading about those. And the way that this one got resolved was like really funny. <laughs> and I just really enjoyed that aspect of it. And seeing everything like come together at the end and seeing like who was behind all of this, like I liked that. But that was like the last 50 pages of the book. So like the rest of it, I was kind of like, okay, it's kind of interesting, but I don't know if I was really that that into it. However, obviously, I'm going to continue reading the series. I have the seventh one over there, which is called An Impossible Imposter. I love the names of these books, by the way. It just, it flows so nicely. And something I also really like about these books, uh, maybe it's kind of corny, but I like it. Because in like all of these books, the other titles of the earlier books in this series are referenced. So I even have one tabbed here. And it's where one of our characters is saying, I will not point out the peril of this undertaking 
And I think the second book in the series is called A Perilous Undertaking. And <laughs> like, it's kind of fun. So currently it is six o'clock. I don't have any plans to do any more reading tonight. However, tomorrow I have the entire day free where I plan to do just a ton of reading. I'm really hoping to make a lot of progress in Wicked Fox. I think I'm also going to start A Tale of Two Cities. I'm really excited to start A Tale of Two Cities because I'm gonna like set up my annotation key. I'm excited about it because I have like a bunch of different tab colors now. So I'm gonna pick them like a fun little color palette. It's gonna be a good time. Like obviously I'm excited to read the book, <laughs> but like I love annotating books. So I'm excited to like get into like fully annotating a book because it's been a minute since I've done that. And I think it's gonna be really fun. But yeah, I think that's everything that I wanted to update you on. So I'm gonna go and I will talk to you guys tomorrow. yesterday yes <laughs> this has become my emotional support sweatshirt so um you already know how it is hello it is currently saturday afternoon it's like three currently and i do indeed have a bit of a reading update for you i did not end up starting a tale of two cities because i didn't want to so i woke up and i was like i'm gonna read wicked fox and i'm really excited that i made that decision because i'm really enjoying it so far i'm currently up to page 119 i'm on chapter 13 and i've just really been enjoying this first like 120 pages we've been introduced to our main character mi young who is a gumiho and then our other main character, Jihoon, who he's, he's just normal, but he's kind of being thrust into this world full of things that he never thought existed. And I love stories like that. <laughs> like a good urban fantasy, I can usually get down with it. But normally the ones that I read are set in like the US or like Europe, but I've been wanting to branch out a bit. And this one takes place in Seoul. And I've really been loving like the Korean culture that has been interwoven into the story. Like it's just so fascinating and I love learning about it. Also throughout this book, there are like sections at the end of certain chapters, but all of those pages are like about the Korean mythology behind kind of some of the things that are happening. And I'm loving reading those as well. And I just think it's gonna be really fun. I really like the dynamic between our two main characters right now because Mi Young is like, I hate everybody. Like everybody annoys me. I just wanna like keep to myself. But Ji Hoon basically won't leave her alone because he thinks she needs friends. Like he's kind of annoying, but I feel like it kind of works with the dynamic that they have and I'm just really enjoying it. And I'm very excited to see where the rest of this is gonna go. But aside from that, I also have some book mail. This is just another volume of Yona of the Dawn. So like nothing, nothing new, nobody's surprised, but I'm gonna open it anyway because I'm excited about it. So I was looking around on Pengo Books a few days ago. I think, and I saw that somebody was selling volume 12 of Yona of the Dawn for like $2. And I was like, who am I to pass up such a deal? Because with shipping, then it's only like five. And like I've already read volume 12, but I was like, you know what? I like the cover for it, so I'm gonna buy it. Here we have Yona looking stunning as always. Some other stunning people on the back of it. And I'm so excited to have this. So a good, Good use of five dollars. That's all I have to update you on, honestly. I haven't really been doing much today. It's been a slow start. I've really just been like reading Wicked Fox and watching YouTube videos. So it's been a chill Saturday. It's gonna continue to be a chill Saturday because I'm just gonna do some more reading. I also think I want to watch like a Ghibli movie tonight, which I'm very excited about, but I don't know which one because recently, let me show you. Recently, I set up a spread in my journal to kind of track the Ghibli movies that I have watched and the ones that I want to watch. Here she is, the Ghibli checklist. Is this? There we go. <laughs> and um, I think I've only watched six, five. And that's a crime because I think there are like 23 Ghibli movies total and I just, I need to watch some more of them. I'm leaning towards watching Princess Mononoke or, oh, maybe I should watch Castle in the Sky. I don't know. I never know what
which one of these movies are gonna like make me really sad because I know there are some really sad Ghibli movies out there so I'm a little scared to just like randomly pick one but I'm gonna go for either of those. I'm leaning towards Princess Mononoke just because I know it's like one of the earlier ones. I know it's very highly regarded so my like one of those. I'm gonna watch one of those. I'm also gonna like go get some Chinese food, make a little night out of it. It'll be, it'll be nice. So yeah, I think that's everything that I needed to tell you. Not a lot, but you know, some exciting things. So I'm gonna go and I'll just talk to you guys whenever I have an update for you. exactly 100 pages left it's kind of satisfying i have again just been really enjoying this book the last like it's been 200 pages since i last updated you i'm so sorry <laughs> but like the last 200 pages has been so angsty and i'm kind of eating it up because at some point in the book too many good things were happening and i was like why is like things are happening so soon kind of felt like insta love and i was like um, i don't know but then cat Cho was like actually i'm just gonna like drop this in here and like ruin everything for a bit and I was like okay yeah <laughs> much better and I like I'm just I'm enjoying it so much and I'm having such a good time reading this book and I'm so excited to see what is gonna happen in the next 100 pages I'm also really loving the characters I feel like both of them have gone through a lot of character development over the course of this 320 pages and I feel like that's usually kind of hard to portray in such a short time but I feel like both of them have grown a lot and changed a lot over the course of this book so far and I'm just like it's really good it's a really good time so I'm going to definitely be finishing this up today so that is exciting but I also have some book mail AKA more volumes of Yon of the Dawn. Let's look at them. So, uh, like I said, I bought five because I, oh, they're so cute. I have no self-control. Uh, that's why I bought five, but I have volume 34, 38, 35, 36, 37, 38, 36. I love this cover so much. And 37. So very um good book mail right here i definitely think i'm going to read volume 34 today because i want to and it sounds really fun so there's that good stuff i'm excited about it although i think i'm running out of room on my shelf where i have all of my volumes of you of the dawn because <laughs> i just keep buying more but that's okay it's a good problem to have and then finally i did indeed watch princess mononoke last night and it was so good <laughs> like i loved it so much like it was fantastic like nothing will eclipse Howl's Moving Castle as my fave Ghibli movie but Princess Mononoke is moving up there like it was it was so good and since the entire focus of the movie is like the impact that humans have on the planet in a very negative way there was a lot of like beautiful nature scenery which is what I love Ghibli movies for like it was so gorgeous I loved it so much also the little forest spirit guys that kind of look like aliens they're so cute <laughs> like honestly all of it was fantastic i love the message i love the animation obviously it was a really good time anyway like i said it's currently sunday afternoon i plan to finish wicked fox tonight which will be exciting i'm gonna read another volume of one of the dawn which will be exciting and aside from that i don't know i might start a tale of two cities I might start Tale of Two Cities. Um, that might be something I do. Or I might start The Kiss of Deception. It's so convenient that both of these are still sitting on my floor. So I don't know. Um, I'm just gonna kind of just see, you know?
updates for you guys. First of all, I did indeed finish Wicked Fox by Kat Cho, and I think I'm gonna give it a four stars. I really enjoyed it, and I thought it was a lot of fun. I will definitely be picking up the second book in this series, which is called Vicious Spirits, but I find it interesting that there's like this epilogue in the back of the book, which is like the only thing that makes this not a standalone. So like, if you wanna read this book, <laughs> But maybe you don't want to read the second book in this series, literally just don't read the epilogue. Because before that it reads like a standalone, which I just, I thought was interesting. I'm excited to see where it's gonna go, but like things were going so well. And then the epilogue came, I was like, oh, well, that's unfortunate. <laughs> but um, overall, I just really like the characters, I like the plot, I like the Korean mythology, I thought it was super interesting to read about, and I'm so glad that I finally picked up this book. I also really like the romance, like that was fun too very into it. I know a lot of people have said that this reads like a K-drama. Um, I've never seen a K-drama in my life, even though I feel like that's something I should look into because I feel like I would like K-dramas, but um, where was I going with that? From what I know about K-dramas, I would agree. You know, like it was just so angsty, but it was so good. So yes, there's Wicked Fox. And then as you will have just seen, I started A Tale of Two Cities. I'm on page 14. We're really making progress now, but oh my god. <laughs> Reading the first chapter of this book, I was like, what's going on? Because after I read the first line, and I already knew what the first line was because it's like a very iconic first line. Like I feel like everybody knows the first line to A Tale of Two Cities, but it's the, it was the best of times, it was the worst of times. And then it goes into this whole thing where it's like, it was the age of wisdom, it was the age of foolishness, it was the epoch of belief, it was the epoch of incredulity. In incredulity? incredulity <laughs> there we go words are hard but like the entire first paragraph of this book intros this theme of like dichotomy which i think is present throughout the entirety of the book and like i already knew about that so after that paragraph i was like literally what's going on <laughs> what do these words mean i don't know i was so confused like basically i get the general gist of the first chapter because it's called what's it called the period so it's kind of like introing what's going on in the year, what is it, 1775, kind of explaining the tension between England and France and all of that. And like, as a general concept, <laughs> I got that. The words themselves though, nothing, absolutely nothing. But I think the second chapter, it was a lot easier to understand and I had like a general idea of what was going on, but I feel like, I still feel like I'm kind of confused and I don't really know why, because when I read Great Expectations, I thought that was so easy to read. Like the things in that just made sense. It wasn't really hard to read. I thought that book was very accessible. And maybe it's because I'm only 14 pages in and I just need to get used to it. I haven't read a classic in a few months. So like going from, you know, Wicked Fox, which is like a fun YA fantasy kind of moment to this is a bit jarring, you know? But I, I'm still excited nonetheless. I'm also excited because there are illustrations throughout this book. Like, look at this. So fun. I love when classics have like the original illustrations that came along with them. Like, I love the, uh, specifically, the Sherlock Holmes illustrations. Well, I don't remember who they're done by, but we talked about them once in a mystery lit class that I took for like three weeks. But I just really like that art style because it's all like just ink drawings and I love them so much. So when I saw this one, I was like, oh, is the rest of it going to be illustrated? Yes. Yes. 14 pages in, I can just tell you, um, I don't know what's going on yet. But like, we haven't even been introduced to the main characters yet. So I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna judge it too harshly yet. We'll, we'll push through now. But I'm gonna take a break with it. Um for a moment. I did, however, pick out a fun little color palette for my annotations, which I'm excited about because Dina sent me all of these, hey, come here. She sent me all of these like tabs a few weeks ago and I've been waiting to like create my like custom annotation palette thing for a book. And this just happened to be my first one. And it was really fun, I can't lie. But I'm gonna read some of that later, I think. For now, I'm going to sit here and read volume 34 of Yona of the Dawn, which I'm like kind of excited for. Oh look, there's cats on it. <laughs> look at them, they're so cute. So I'm going to sit here and read volume 34 of Yona of the Dawn while I recover from the first 14 pages of A Tale of Two Cities. I'm kidding. I'm kidding, it wasn't that bad, but. Ah, <laughs> yeah, let's read. 
That was the back of the book. There we go. It is currently Monday morning. It's like nine o'clock. I do have a couple of reading updates for you, but I'm not going to be able to give you those right now because I'm kind of running out of time because I'm meeting my mom at this scrapbook shop that's like 45 minutes away from my apartment and I kind of need to go, but I did kind of want to give you some context for what I'm about to show you because this is the scrapbook shop that I always like to stop at like on my way to or from school because they have so many good like vintage sticker sheets and i'm gonna stock up on some halloween ones and i'm so excited about it and yes aside from that really quick reading update i read a ton of the kiss of deception last night i think i made it up to page like 160 i'm enjoying it but i wouldn't say i'm absolutely loving it i feel like it's a bit slow i feel like things are happening a bit easily but i'm still intrigued enough that i'm excited to listen to some more i am actually going to listen to the audiobook on my way to and from places today so hopefully i will also make some progress that way i do really like our main character i feel like she's a very strong and independent woman and i absolutely respect that but aside from that i have no thoughts like both of the uh like the prince and the assassin that are being sent after her which side note the assassin was not sent by her father it was like just some random assassin who thinks you know i don't even remember why he's going after her honestly but i have more faith in uh this royal family for not sending an assassin after their daughter like i thought they did <laughs> also i ended up reading two volumes of yon of the dawn yesterday to be honest volume 34 i did not care for it was going into this backstory of this character that definitely is important to the plot but i was like i don't really care <laughs> I'm sorry, girly, but like, I don't need to know more about your backstory. And it was just such a diversion from like the normal plot that I was like, mm, okay. But volume 35, I was also not enjoying in the beginning, but then they brought it back. And I was like, okay, oh, <laughs> the thing about this series is I love the, I love the romance so much. And I love the friendships that have formed throughout the course of this series so much as well. Like those are the reasons that I absolutely adore this series. But the thing is, right now we're in an arc where we don't really get to see those as much. And it's very like political right now. And I feel like sometimes it gets a little too political, in my opinion, at least. I know like the romance is a subplot. It's not really the main plot. And it's really like a historical fantasy, which some of those aspects I do really like. But sometimes I feel like it gets a little bit too into it for like my tastes. So that's kind of where we're at with it right now. There are definitely like interesting things happening. Um, but like these last few volumes I've been like, yeah, you know, it's fine, but I'm sure I'm sure they'll like bring it back out of a 38 volume series I recognize that, you know, some of them have to be duds. Anyway, those are all of the reading updates that I have today One of my main plans for the rest of today is to finish the kiss of deception Which may be a bit ambitious because it's still of like 300 ish pages left maybe a bit under 300 but it's possible We'll just see. But anyway, I'm gonna go because, uh, like I said, I'm running late, but I will talk to you guys later. I also have some fun book mail later. That is also a thing that will be happening. So it's like two o'clock now. I did indeed go 
to that fun little scrapbook store and I got a lot of things that I thought I could show you because I'm so freaking excited about all of these and I want to show you so I'm gonna show them to you. I got a lot of Halloween stickers and then I also got a lot of butterfly stickers because those are like my two vibes you know what I'm saying so first of all we have these yes Cute. Actually, that's a lie. I got this Christmas sticker because I liked it. I thought it was fun. Um, I got this one, a little October sticker. We have just a, it's like some general fall ones, which will be really good for fall spreads, naturally. We have these butterfly ones. I think they're just so cute. They're so colorful. I have more Halloween stickers. Like these specifically give me a very vintage feel and I like them a lot. We have this like little winter tea set, which I thought was cute. More Halloween stickers, little... I don't know, animals and costumes. I thought it was precious, honestly. And then we have some butterfly stickers, which are sparkly, but I thought I had another one. Um, I lied, we have more fall stickers and we have this butterfly sticker. So, good haul. Um, I love going in that store so much. It's absolutely amazing. Like just so many things to look at, it's so fun. So. Yes, there's that. I also have a bit of a book mail for you, uh, which I kind of already opened. Oops. but. <laughs> This is um, a momentous occasion though, because this will be the very last book depository package that I ever talk about on this channel. <laughs> May she rest in peace. I know it's owned by Amazon, so I'm not that sad, but I'm also like, the book depository. It's fine, everything's fine, but I got a book, obviously. So I ended up picking up Flush by Virginia Woolf. This is one of the Penguin Little Black classics. I have a tiny collection of these growing, so. Kind of wanted to add to it, and they're like really cheap. Well, they were really cheap. I'll book depository, but it's fine. <laughs> but this is like a, it's a playful, witty biography of Elizabeth Barrett Browning's Pet Spaniel, who I believe is a poet. But I saw Carolyn Marie Reads read this like last summer in a vlog or something, and I've been interested in it ever since because I've never read a book um, in the point of view of a, an animal in general at all before. And I thought it sounded delightful. I've been wanting to try something out by Virginia Woolf, but I wanted something a bit shorter, even though the rest of her work isn't that long. I don't know. Like, you know what I mean? Just a good intro. Maybe. I have no idea. <laughs> um, but we'll see. And I am very excited about this. So last book depository book ever. <laughs> That's fine. I also do have a reading update for you on The Kiss of Deception. I did listen to my audiobook while I was driving around today. And I made it up to chapter 34, which is page 247. So I think I'm like exactly halfway through the book, which is really good progress because I literally started this last night. So not mad about that. I'm kind of liking it. I'm not like disliking this book in any way. I'm just not fully invested in the story. And I don't know if I will be because we are like already halfway through the book. So I'm definitely very interested to see where things are going to go because the dynamics between like kind of the three main characters that we're following is very intriguing because like I have said before, our main character is a runaway princess. And in this town that she has kind of settled down in, in an attempt to hide, two new guys have kind of, you know, shown up in her life. Their names are Wraith and Caden. And as readers, we know that they are the assassin and the prince, but we don't know which one is which, I think. At least I'm pretty sure we don't know which one is which, or maybe I missed that part. But I think the point is that we're not supposed to know which one is the prince and which one is supposed to like literally kill her. So that's kind of fun, but both of them know that she is the princess, but she doesn't know the identities of either of them. So that part of it I am really enjoying, and I think that's a very fun dynamic to add into a story like this. But so far it has been rather slow, and not a ton of things have been happening. So basically in the first part of this book we've kind of just seen her growing closer to them, developing friendships, maybe relationships, but I think things are gonna get pretty juicy because when the assassin rolled into town he had a month in which he had to kill her. But he's kind of grown feelings for her, I think. Maybe? I still don't know which one is which. Um, but he's down to a week left on that time span, so gonna happen. I don't know. I'm gonna place money right now that he doesn't murder her, um, considering there are two other books in the series, but I, I'm interested to see what's gonna happen nonetheless. So, not my favorite, but I am really enjoying it and I do really like the audiobook because each of like the three main people that we're following, they all have different narrators and just something about that I eat up. So, 
yeah, it's a pretty good time. So I'm just gonna aim to make some progress in this, and then I also plan on reading some more volumes of Yon of the Dawn. Obviously, I'm gonna read volumes 36 and 37, which I'm really excited about. So these are kind of um, the plans for the rest of the day. I'm very excited about them, so let's just get into it. actually Wednesday now. I did not end up vlogging anything yesterday just because nothing of interest really happened. So I didn't have anything to show, but I, I'm back today with some reading updates, which I'm very excited about because I started a book that I think I'm gonna love, honestly, and I'm so excited to talk about it. I haven't like introed it in the vlog, but I had it. Oh man, I just realized I took back all of my library books this morning, but the book that I started yesterday is also a library book, which is very unfortunate, but like, it's fine. I'll turn it in when I leave, like it'll be okay. But first of all, so far this morning, I have been doing some packing. As you will notice, my shelf is gone and everything is put into, well, it's not gone. I'm bringing it like home with me, but it's not here anymore. I moved it, I took all the books off of it. I put a lot of my books in these boxes. I still have like some up here for like filming and stuff, but when I end this vlog, or maybe even before I end this vlog. Those need to go somewhere. So a lot of them are in boxes. As you will notice, I put my, you know, prized possession in its own box. I had this book of the month box sitting around and I put Strange the Dreamer in it <laughs> because it's in such good condition. I don't want anything happening to her. So she gets like her own box and it's blue, which I thought was very fitting. Today is gonna be a big packing day because I literally move out in like four days and I have a lot of stuff. So that'll be happening. But aside from that, I have reading updates. First of all, let me show you the book that I started. I started Half a Soul by Olivia Atwater. I'm up to page 42 and I already really love it, <laughs> to be honest. This is like a Regency romance, but there's like fae and magic in it. And honestly, I don't know why I didn't pick this up sooner because that sounds like something that I would absolutely five star. I, I love like the first 42 pages. Like I'm already obsessed and I, I just need to read some more of it. I'm so excited. Also, this is blurred by India Holton who writes another like, you know, historical romance-ish series that I love. So that's just, 
It's so fun. Basically in this book you're following our main character Dora who got half of her soul taken at I think a rather young age by the Fae. So she kind of doesn't feel emotions like normal people do. Like she doesn't feel embarrassed or scared or shocked or whatever. She's kind of just like neutral. Which is very interesting. I've never read a book with any sort of plot line like that. It's just been really interesting to see that come into play in a more like strict society in a way because you know back in the regency period women had to act a certain way feel a certain way about certain things and because like her emotions are like dulled she doesn't feel that way and it's just really interesting and i'm really enjoying it also there's like this dude his name is elias wilder and i watched tori i, f I feel like i talk about tori all the time but i get so many book recs from her like that's the reason why i picked this book up but tori from tori between pages read this recently and she said that the guy whose name is is it elias elias but he is the lord sorcier so basically he's just like a wizard and he's really rude and kind of ill-tempered and tori compared him to howl from howl's moving castle and i was like that that is quite the uh, the accurate comparison so far and i absolutely love howl's moving castle like one of my top favorite movies so i'm like I see it. I see the vibes and I'm so excited about it. So I don't know if I'll be finishing this in the vlog, but I wanted to tell you guys that I started it and I'm obsessed. <laughs> it's so good. And then I've also made quite a bit of progress with The Kiss of Deception. I'm up to page 319 now. Things are finally happening. Like shit is going down. Um, I was incorrect in my assumptions about certain things, <laughs> but it's it's really interesting to see how things are playing out. Um, I'm still not like 100% invested in it, but I'm not minding listening to the audiobook. Like, it's fine. I wish I had more feelings about it, <laughs> but it's kind of just fine. So yeah, it's fine. <laughs> and then my other reading update for you, I actually don't have the volumes because they're packed away into one of these boxes, but I ended up reading volumes 36 through 38 of Yone of the Dawn which means I'm completely caught up and I don't know what to do with my life anymore. <laughs> I was like so sad when I finished volume 38 and like I know it's not the ending like of the series obviously because there are more volumes to come but I'm like what do I do with my time until those volumes come out? Like there's one that comes out in August I think and then another one that comes out in December? Question mark? I'm not 100% sure but that's too far away. Like, that's way too far away, and I'm sad about it. On the bright side, though, I do plan to go back and read the volumes that I ended up missing because I watched the anime instead, so I have some content that I haven't exactly consumed, even though I have because, like, I didn't know what happens, but I'm excited to, like, actually read them instead of watching them. So, um, that'll happen at some point in time. I think I'm gonna wait just a little bit <laughs> until I do that, but I'm still really sad. But it's fine. Anyway, it's currently 12 o'clock on Wednesday, like I said. Literally my only plan today is to pack. I would say I'm gonna listen to the Kiss of Deception audiobook, but I don't know if I will because I started listening to The Twilight Effect again, which is like a Twilight podcast run by Ashley Green, who is the actress that played Alice in the movies. And they're just like kind of fun to throw on. I've been listening to that recently because all of my music it's just like stale at this point. I've listened to it too much. So I'm like, what do I listen to? And then I remembered that this podcast existed. So I was like, okay, I'll listen to that while I'm out and about. But now that I'm home, I'm like, I want to listen to more of it. So I'm just, I'm just going to do that. Right now, I think I'm going to work on packing all of my stationery. So like all the things in my desk and the little dresser that I have over there. But aside from that, I don't know what I'm going to do today. Hopefully I will finish The Kiss of Deception because I only have like 150 pages left, maybe 160. Damn, it just keeps going. Um, okay, I have like 150 pages left. So I'm hoping I can finish this today just because I kind of want to be done with it. But we'll see. We'll see if that ends up happening. So I will talk to you guys at some point in time. Peace. <laughs>
everybody. It is currently Friday morning. I did not end up vlogging anything again yesterday just because I didn't really do much yesterday. I had to grade a bunch of finals. So that was really fun, but that's all I did like the entire day. So basically I'm here to end the vlog. I did do a bit of packing earlier today, which I showed you, but aside from that, I don't have anything else that I wanna do in this vlog right now. It's also like an hour long. And I'm like, you know what? I think an hour's good. So I'm just going to end the vlog here. So I'm gonna give you my final reading update on The Kiss of Deception, go through these books that I have to talk about, and then I'll let you go. So yes, final reading update on The Kiss of Deception. I'm gonna give it a three stars. If we're being realistic, it's more like a 2.75, but I'm rounding it up to a three stars just like when I talk about it because it's easier that way. But I just felt very apathetic towards the entirety of this book and I wish I loved it, but I didn't because you know, the concept is really cool, but I also feel like the concept didn't really deliver in the way that I was expecting it to. And maybe it was just a product of me having expectations that were too high, but like it was fine. But I didn't really like her main character that much. I didn't really feel anything towards either of the love interests and it just didn't feel like anything super exciting or different from other books in the YA genre. And I know this is written in like 2014, I think so maybe it was, you know, new and different back when it came out, but also that wasn't that long ago. I don't know. However, I am glad that I decided to listen to this on audio because if I wasn't listening to it on audio, well, and if it wasn't for the book club, I probably would have DNF'd this rather early into the book really. But you know, it was fine. I don't know if I'd necessarily recommend it, but yeah, I don't know. I just don't know. So yeah. But on to some more, you know, fun notes. I have other books to talk about. First of all, I have not read anything else in Half a Soul and I do have to return this book to the library, but I think I'm going to make an exception to my, not really book buying ban, but like I'm on a, um, I'm on a journey to, you know, read some of my physical books. And I think I've done a good job of that this week. Like I've read like a few that I've owned, which I'm very excited about but I really want a physical copy of this book for myself and I'm only like 42 pages in. So I think I'm gonna return this book to the library because I have to do that anyway, because I move out in like two days. And I think I'm gonna buy a physical copy of this for myself because I'm so excited about it. So yes, I will probably be reading this in my next vlog and I'm so excited about it. And if I don't absolutely love it, I'm gonna cry, but I'm, I'm really enjoying it so far. So that will be coming up soon little preview. Uh, then I finished An Unexpected Peril, gave this book three stars. I did actually start listening to the audiobook for the seventh book, which is called what? An Impossible Imposter. I've listened to like 4% of the audiobook and it's happening. <laughs> you know, I'm excited. I'm excited to see what's going to happen in the seventh book. Seventh? Yeah, seventh. Um, even though I didn't love this one, I still really love the characters and you know, three stars. It was okay. And then, um, my fail of the week, I read 14 pages of A Tale of Two Cities and I didn't read any more because I didn't want to. But, you know, maybe I'll pick it up in my next vlog. We'll see. If I don't, that's okay too. And then finally, well actually not finally, um, the next I guess, I have A Wicked Fox by Kat Cho. Uh, I gave this book a four to five stars. I very much enjoyed it. I thought it was super fun and I'm so glad that I finally got to reading it and I will absolutely be reading Vicious Spirits because it follows two characters that I'm very interested to see more from. So oh, it was such a good time. I really like this book. So there's that one. I read five volumes of Yona of the Dawn. They were fantastic. Well, okay, some of them were fantastic. Um, there were some really good scenes in some of the ones that I read, but I read volumes 34 through 38 and I'm completely caught up with the series and I'm so sad. <laughs> but yeah, I think that is, that's everything. That's everything that I needed to tell you. How many books did I read this week? Eight? I think I finished eight books this week. Um, granted, five of those were volumes of manga, but we're gonna count it anyway. Yeah. Anyway, that's it. That's the vlog. I really hope you guys enjoyed. We have some fun moving content. If you're into that, we had some reading content. If you're into that, I'm super excited to be starting my summer vlogs because I graduate in two days and then it's time it's YouTube time. You know what I'm saying? And I'm so excited for all of the videos that I have planned this summer. I have a few good ones up in up here, so I hope those actually come to fruition. But I, I hope you guys are excited because I'm certainly 
very excited. So yeah, I'm going to stop rambling and I'm gonna let you go. Thank you so, so much for watching. If you did enjoy, please do let me know what you guys have been reading recently or just how you're doing recently. Any fun things, anybody also finishing their semester of school, I'd love to know. And yeah, I'm going to, like I said already, <laughs> let you go. And I will see you guys in my next video.